surfing the net, in particular YouTube, I saw that the number of uh, people that deny the existence of God, the existence of Jesus, the divinity of Christ, uh, the scriptures, is enormous. It's tremendous. <laughs> Atheists, those people that just hate God. All right. I let the Lord answer. King James Bible, chapter 14 of the Psalms. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So this is God speaking because the scriptures are written by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Godhead. But there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay? So God is said to these people, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable works. There is none that does good. This is a reference also in the book of Romans, in chapter 3. Uh, what then? Are we better than they? Apostle Paul is asking, as a Jew, as a Hebrew, he said, Are we better than they of the Gentiles? No. In no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they're all on the scene. People need to understand this. If you at the moment don't believe in God or deny God or attack the person and the personality, the character of the Lord and deny Christ, and you can't understand this book, it's because you're on the scene. And sin is like a cancer. Sin makes you completely hmm, numb, spiritually speaking, to the reality of God and His Spirit. Because God is a spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. You cannot materialize, touch, feel, and, you know, God, even though there are many sections of the so-called Christian religion, they want to go for experience, experience God, you know. And they go just against what is written. Because you can experience God, we walk by faith in a word, in, in His words, not by sight. Uh, if you want to experience God, you will put yourself in a very dangerous situation because the spiritual world is greater and more various than you can even imagine. There is not only God, the Spirit, the Holy God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit. But there are so many evil, corrupt devils, evil spirits that can influence you in many ways. And of course, typical of Satan is a great deceiver. They come under the disguise of being good and nice. Why not? Let's have a good experience with God. Yeah, right. Let's go to the word once again. It says... What then are we better than they? No, in no wise we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles, which includes all, all mankind, okay? Man and women, bond or free, rich and poor, everyone. They're the all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, no one. Where is it written? In Psalm 14, verse 1, we just read. In Psalm 53, verse 1, in Ecclesiastes 7:20. For there is not a just man upon earth that does good and sins not. That's it. So if you think I'm okay, I'm a scientist, I'm a professor, I'm a very good person, I'm a good husband, good wife, good son, good daughter, well, you might go, be good according to the way people consider good, but not for God. Because God already said, there is none righteous, no, no one. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. They are all gone out of the way. They all together become unprofitable. There is none that does good. Not no one. Their truth is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used the seed. The poison of asps is under their lips. You go. The references are so many. Here in Psalm 5, verse 9, For there is no faithfulness in their mouth, 
Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. The sepulchre is it's a grave. They flutter with their tongue. Psalm 140 verse 3. They are sharp with their tongues like a serpent. Others poison is under their lips. You see? Psalm 5 verse 9. And going back to where we were. Yeah. The poison of us is under their lips. Oh, just, you know. Just to understand, this is the word of God. This is God speaking. So you might be very angry with me because I tell you as it is. But in reality, this is God speaking. I'm not speaking. I'm reading what is written. You understand the difference? Yeah. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Psalm 10 verse 7. His mouth is full of cursing, deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. They f they feed a swift to shed blood. Proverbs 116, Isaiah 59, 7. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. And Isaiah 59, 7. Their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their purse. People who don't like the Bible, I understand. Actually, they, they really don't want anything to do with the Bible because the Bible tells the truth. <laughs> and when the time the Bible tells you what kind of criminal you are, spiritually speaking, or you may be a very good citizen, live a good life, pay taxes, go to work, being a nice citizen, you go even to church or in the temple, or in the lodge. But you're corrupt, man. You don't, you don't even know, because until you get yourself in Christ, and that's the operation of God, you can't do this by yourself. It happens when you believe the gospel. You are in this condition. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they no known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Isaiah 59, the way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment that goings. They make crooked paths, whatsoever goes therein shall know no peace. <laughs> the way of peace they don't know known, there is no fear of God before uh, their eyes. Destruction and misery are in the west, their feet are swift, they shed blood. Um, today is the 2nd of March. 2024 I'm in Western Australia where I'm talking at the moment for what I know and everybody knows there are two big wars massacres genocide call it the way you want Russia Ukraine <clears throat> has been going on for two maybe three years already yeah and Palestine uh, is getting destroyed by the Zionist uh, Israel the reality is Destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace that they know known. Nations spend trillions and trillions of dollars to <clears throat> arm themselves, you know. Of course, they go with the Masonic uh, concept, which goes back to Julius Caesar. If you want peace, prepare for war. So they say, ah, oh, this is for self-defense. But then happens that this self-defense always... <clears throat> is throwing missile rockets bombs and destroying most of the time also civilians that uh, at, at least you know the civilians are not there in the front fighting but there is no even more front you know they just, they just destroy and kill and bomb everything but and this is just happening now and also in africa there are wars you know there's been a genocide in congo you know in africa but what about you know in the last century, there were two world wars, more than 100 million people died. There's been the Vietnam War, which created a tremendous amount of people and lives destroyed in every possible way. Because there is not only what happens there in the war, it's the aftermath, you know. People with <clears throat> traumatic stress disorders, the number of suicides of the veterans is absolutely appalling. 
which I would understand because for me, I tell you, uh, a soldier is a glorified murderer, you know, okay, he goes under the flag, my, my country, I'm a patriot, but in reality, you're shooting other human beings, you know, their the fathers and mothers like you, <laughs> they people, they got two eyes, a nose, two ears, you know, a face, a body like you, you know, <clears throat> that's terrible, 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 terrible. So we go back in Psalm 14. <laughs> in Psalm 14, it begins in a way that also 53, Psalm 53, the fullest said in his heart, there is no God, corrupt that day, have, have done abominable iniquity, there is none that does good. It seems to me that uh, the Lord has got to underline, put an emphasis on this, because mankind lives a great illusion. You know, puny man that uh, is born of a woman, and his days are few. <laughs> if you, even if you live 100 years. And by the way, I'm 75, I can tell you. It seems just yesterday, you know. I mean, this time is an illusion in your mind, but the reality, the body starts to break down and I can see when you become really old I got my mother 95 in a nursing home and what happens you know you see how uh, these poor people when they become old they got no more functions they depend totally from nurses and doctors in these places in like hospital and nursing homes so yeah you, you want to live a long life depends how you get there if you get there not to mention that uh, Tremendous amount of people who every day die worldwide for many different reasons. We're talking uh, uh, hundreds of thousands, you know. But people have this illusion, oh, life is mine, I do whatever I want, there is no God, I do whatever I want. Okay, do whatever you want, but then listen what the Lord says. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand the seek God. Guess what? None. They are all gone aside, they all together become filthy, there is none that does good, not, not one. And this again takes you to Romans and the Psalms that we read before. Wow. <laughs> and then God uh, rhetorically kind of asks, have all the works of iniquity and non knowledge? And so it looks like, you know, I told you what sin does. It makes you spiritually blind. You're blind spiritually and insensitive. The word of God doesn't speak to you and you think you are your own God, but you are not. In fact, if you were a God, you would be able not to die, but you're going to die. Hmm. Oh, nice, yeah. Have all the works of iniquity in our knowledge, you eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. And then he tells you what's going to happen. There were they, there were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Now, this is written to Israel. The, the righteous in Israel were, were those who believed. In this case, when Christ came, the little flock. But to us, the body of Christ, everyone who believes how Christ died for our sins, how Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried was again the third day, according to the scriptures, scriptures. That person is saved and sealed by grace, is saved and justified, is forgiven, is accepted in the beloved and blessed. But if you are outside, hmm, there were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. You shame the counsel of the poor because the Lord is his refuge. And you see also these very rich, uh, wealthy people that hate, you know, the masses. Uh, and they want to destroy us. They have a plan to depopulate the earth. You shame the counsel of the poor because the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. So... The time is going to come when Christ comes the second time to Israel and he will restore his remnant. Not this modern Israel that is there doing anything but the will of God. Those in the future which will believe in the Messiah 
Christ, they will believe, they will confess their sin that they crucified the Messiah and they will receive him as the Messiah, King of Israel, and will enter in the kingdom, the remnant, the saved Israel. All Israel shall be saved means the believing Israel, because the key is to believe. So yes, if you're an atheist, if you go around saying, with all, I saw some videos which are absolutely disgusting, uh, it's very easy to be an atheist. Just follow your flesh and follow the God of this world, Satan, and pretend to be an intellectual, uh, quote philosophy and philosophers, uh, use big words to entice uh, those who fall in the trap that you prepare for them, and that's it. And you say, I'm an atheist. Scriptures say you're a fool. A fool of said in his heart, there is no God. Now, it's a terrible situation to be in, and you don't realize, uh, realize how bad it is. God forbid you die before you receive the gospel of Christ, you will drop into hell and the lack of fire. And this is not to scare you, but possibly to put the terror in you, because hell and the lack of fire in the Bible are described as eternal torment, the second death. There is a physical death, which is the first death. You're already dead in trespasses and sin if you're not saved. In that condition, you will enter eternity and you will be cast in the lake of fire. At the great white throne judgment, you're going to be judged for your works. And because all your works are works of iniquity, unrighteous works of the flesh, you cannot be accepted. You'll be excluded from the presence of God for eternity, but you're not going to be in somewhere in holiday just doing your own thing. You're going to be in the lake of fire. So... This is so serious. I gave you the scriptures. I can give another scripture now. If you really want hope, there is hope. And there's a sure hope. If you believe in your heart, okay, that Christ died for your sins, it was better, rose again the day to justify you. If you simply believe without even saying a prayer, if you put your trust in what Christ has accomplished, okay, you haven't seen him, you can touch, you cannot touch him, you cannot feel. You cannot see, okay, he's, he's in heaven at the right hand of the Father, but his spirit is present and his word is present. If you believe, God saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. And this book is written so that you may have life, not death. Okay, the Lord doesn't want, the Lord doesn't take any pleasure in the death of the, of the lost. In chapter 2 of First Timothy, it says to you, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God as Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So God wants you saved, and He wants you to come to the knowledge of the truth. And He will give you the knowledge of the truth with this book. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave Himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So please believe in the gospel of the grace of God in Christ. Be saved, be sealed, live eternally, because it's a free gift. I'm not talking about going to church, paying tithes, getting water baptism, confessing Jesus with your mouth, and all this. I don't, I'm not saying this singing song. I'm saying just believe how the Christ died for your sins, all of them, past, present, future. And he was buried and he rose again the third day to justify you, if you believe it. Will you believe it? I hope so, and I pray so. Grace and peace to all.